everyone, welcome. My name is Maya and today I'll be talking about software engineering and its methodologies. So first let's know what is software engineering. Software engineering is nothing but like building a home. So to build a home, you need a blueprint. Same way to build a software project or website, you need a structure. So there are many ways of structural approach. Among those, today we are only going to talk about two types of approach, waterfall and agile. First, let's talk about waterfall model. What is waterfall model? It's the first formal model discovered in 1917 and it is also called as the traditional model and it is one of the oldest model. So it is a linear or a sequential model and it follows a top-down approach. So there are six phases in this. Those six phases are requirements, design, development, testing, deploy and maintenance. Let's see what happens in each phase. So requirements. So here the clients or the shareholders uh, give a certain requirement for a software project or a website. So once the requirements are given, the requirements are frozen. So basically what happens when it's, once it's frozen? So you cannot change the requirement, like basically update a requirement, you cannot add a requirement, you cannot delete a requirement, you cannot do anything. Once one particular phase is done in this waterfall model, it moves on to the next and it cannot go back. It just keeps going down. So as I told, it follows a top-down approach. So next step is uh, design. So in design, basically software tools are used to design. Uh, basically, it's nothing but giving a structure for the project or the website or whatever. So next step is development. So here development, it's nothing but source code, basically writing a code for the project or the website, for example. The next stage is testing. So after writing the code, you're going to run it and test it. So if there are no bugs or errors, it moves on to the next step. If there are any bugs or errors, it does not move on to the next step. It is considered as failure because it does not go up or it does not have any loop. It just follows a top-down approach. So it is considered as failure if you get any bugs or errors. So next, deploy. Deploy is now there are no bugs, no errors. It's running successfully. Now it is released to the end users. So basically us, we use many apps like Facebook, Swiggy, Instagram. So we are the end users basically. So next is maintenance. Maintenance is nothing but like updating. You keep on getting updates, right? So that is nothing but maintenance. You keep on getting maintenance after it is released to the end users. Let's talk about characteristics and applications. So as we already know, it follows a top-down approach. It is a linear or a sequential flow and it has requirements fixed. As we know in the first stage, the requirements are frozen. So you cannot change or update or delete any requirements. So it is also strongly documented in the sense like the requirements are specified in an easy way to understand. So there are no further like future errors application used in medical industry uh, you know like fire alarms or embedded systems advantages easy to understand simple and easy to understand clear structure strong documentation again disadvantages you know requirements are fixed which kind of makes it not very flexible so we cannot change or do anything. So once it's fixed, you have to go with it. Uh, you know, like testing does not happen in each and every single phase. So once the bugs or the errors are detected in the testing phase, it leads to failure because the requirements are already frozen. So it kind of becomes like a loss. It kind of is a failure. So basically that way. And also, uh, you know, this model is best for you know simple and small projects nothing like complex projects because this follows a sequential flow top-down approach and uh, the requirements are fixed so once it comes to a complex project for sure there are going to be a lot of errors and bugs happening so it's best for small projects let's talk about the agile model agile model basically works on four principles 
uh, the first one is interaction between the individuals during the documentation process second one is customer collaboration is very important third one is a working product is very important and then the fourth one is responding to changes is way more important rather than going in a certain planned manner so this is a iterative model so there is this one stage called planning and so in planning you know the client the stakeholder the manager everyone's interacting with each other and they discuss about the budget the requirements and everything necessary so example you are a client you want to you know develop a website or an app uh, so you give like 50 requirements for now so basically this model like requirements are not fixed so you can change you can update you can delete or remove any you know requirements if you suppose so you have you have given 50 requirements so in the planning stage they decide to take first 10 requirements in design first then move on later so first 10 requirements are taken they are designed they are developed and they are tested so for example in the testing phase if there are two bugs found they will not do anything about it they'll still deploy so end users can use it and end users give feedback so one iteration takes around like one to three weeks next uh, you know they move on to the second iteration after the first iteration is done so in the second iteration they plan for the another 10 requirements and then they take they also add the bugs which were found in the previous requirement so uh, pre previous iteration only. so basically we for example we had found two bugs so 10 requirements plus the two bugs so 12 requirements and they'll also take the feedback from the end users and do some changes in requirement so now they'll design the 12 the same thing continues until they finish and having a working project or a working website and then later maintenance will be there so basically you'll get updates uh you know according to the trend or you know security updates basically now let's talk about the key concept and framework so basically we know that this is the iterative model it is an interactive model so interaction between each individual happens in the planning phase uh you know collaboration happens and then uh, you know continuous uh, product delivery is happening basically you know we are deploying at each iteration for feedback uh, then framework scrum so basically in it's like a scrum meeting there will be a scrum master in the scrum meeting uh, it is like a stand up 10 minute meeting which happens regularly so from each department one head comes so from testing one head come like one person comes from designing one person comes so like that each head will have a meeting uh, regarding how the flow is going on and also decide you know when the bug should be fixed like in which iteration the bug is supposed to be fixed now let's talk about its applications so requirements can be changed updated removed and then early and rapid delivery of the product keeps happening in each iteration so continuously you know product is delivered uh, you get feedback to improve you know the product and then you know again constantly interaction between the teammates and collaboration with the clients keeps happening now let's talk about advantages it's very flexible again requirements you can change update and stuff like that again early and continuous delivery of the product you keep getting feedback like in each step in each iteration you're delivering the product and then you get a feedback so because of the feedback the quality of the product also improves now let's talk about the disadvantages so disadvantages basically you know you can even start a you know product like just with one requirement as well you can start the iteration or planning process even with one requirement so and also basically you can you know add 
more requirements and keep on updating it uh, multiple times so you don't know how long this is going to take so this is very time consuming and it also ends up becoming very expensive the longer the time the more expensive so you know this is one of the disadvantages you have no idea especially you know if you have a aim or like a product to be delivered in this much time this is not the right model to be used because you don't know how long this is going to take now that we have studied about you know learned about waterfall model and agile model let's have a comparison between them so approach waterfall model again linear sequential follows the top down approach whereas agile it is a iterative model interaction between the members keeps on constantly happening so flexibility so in waterfall model flexibility is very low it is because you know requirements are fixed and frozen in the first stage but whereas in agile model flexibility is very high because you can change it any time you can update it any time multiple times also so customer involvement in waterfall model it is very low because uh, only during the first stage which is requirement stage there is interaction between the customers uh, once the requirements are frozen there is no you know interaction between the customers but whereas in agile model uh, interaction is way high because in each step and each iteration you know customer involvement is very important and required uh documentation so documentation is very strong in uh, you know waterfall model because again requirements are getting frozen so you know it should be specified in a way which is very easy to understand so that no bugs or errors come in the further steps but whereas in agile model you know documentation can be very light you it is not necessary because you can change any time so if there are bugs also you can fix it later on uh, risk management highly risky because again uh, documentation is strong but then you know the requirements are frozen so once the requirements are frozen you get error it leads to failure but here as in it is very low in agile because you know you keep getting feedback so as you get feedback you can improve the quality of the product so delivery in waterfall model one last only single time it happens in the very last step but whereas in agile model in each iteration we have you know delivery of product and also feedback now let's see how we can choose the right methodology for a particular project so there are four properties which we'll have to see go through to you know select the right and the proper methodology so first one is project characteristics so basically you're uh, seeing um, you know the nature of the requirement and seeing if a particular project is complex or not second team structure so you are seeing if a organization is open to you know collaboration and interaction between the clients and the team and every single individual or if they are you know self organized so third one we are seeing organization culture so we are seeing if they are open to changing and updating requirements or not fourth one we are seeing client requirement we are seeing the interaction levels between the client stakeholder you know uh, the team and even also the end user to get the feedback thank you so much for staying till the end and watching this video please leave a like share it with your friends and family and please subscribe to this channel thank you